What's up? It's Mike Dean. You're in my studio with Reverb. But see, I have good timing. Yeah. <laughs> I have good timing luck. Put it that way. Let's see how things are acting here today. See you later. I always love these matriarch and grandmother combo. It's like my, on my live setup, I'm always using this, you know. And I've repurposed a couple of knobs on here since I only use two oscillators on this. I repurpose a couple of the mixer knobs, or actually frequency knobs, and I to keep the mixer down on those channels so I can use them for delay throws. Uh, one for that, one for this guy. Pretty cool. It's like so cool for live stuff, you know, you can. This thing, like I love using the arpeggios in it. I make the same sound on every synth, it's kind of funny. I play a lot on Beyonce's album, all those thin stabs and shit. All the. It's all this thing. It's amazing sound. I mean, it's, you know, it's like the top two sought after poly synths in the world. Yeah, my other synth was supposedly the one they played on Thriller, my other CS80, but this one has a crazy history too. I'm waiting to get the rental records from it. One of the main rental places in Hollywood had it all through the 70s and 80s. So, you know, everybody used it. This thing sounds so good. <laughs> it's got a mod where you can unison it and make it all 16 voices. Pretty good. Or you can split it where you can you can select with this knob, you can select different can you see the lights light up? You have a different sound in the bottom half. That's like not normal at all. Like I've never seen heard of one that does this, so I saw this one. But it's good normal. Normal, just the, the brass sounds. The... the good thing about it is the poly after touch. Like you hit one note louder than the others and it stands out. It's like the most expressive synth in the world. I don't know why everybody doesn't make poly after touch synths. It's pretty stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the 70s, they did it right. But... These are like my two favorite synths in the room. 
Up until I got the four voice and the OBX. <laughs> This is the, the Rush keyboard, you know, the... It's the best synth in the world. I mostly like it in unison, just to sound like a <laughs> you know, bass. Very similar to this, you know what I mean? But it's just way harder to work. This thing sounds great though, like it's cool because each note has a different little bit of a setting to it. So see every time you hit a note it switches to a different Or you can make it cycle like this. Or you can split it. It's all prog rock there, you know. Right now I've got everybody playing these three as unison on the bottom and that one on top. Amazing synth, isn't it? Sounds it makes. Spend 14, 15 grand on an old one. This is a great thing. The filter's really musical. I like when you can catch notes in that, you know. It's a good filter when you can do that, you know? This is one of my top five, too. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't know, it's just... I still always wondered when I was a kid and they just sound really special to me. You know? It's the way the pads sound. These have been used on so much stuff. Kind of everything I did for a few years was just like called the trifecta. A lot of Kanye stuff, a lot of Travis stuff. I mean, this guy's just like, can never lose with this bass sound. I just use two oscillators. It's like, the number of songs that combination's been on is crazy, really.
like I said, I've, I've switched this to this new um, Native Instruments 88 controller because it has poly aftertouch. This has been a Triton for like 20 years on this rig, and it just got replaced. The Kanye West sound. I just like when everything sounds like the Terminator. Let's get it going. I wasn't going to show any tricks. There's a good trick, though. Step input. It's a max for live device. I mean, every, every other DAW except for Ableton has it where you can just hit record and play notes and it steps along and records. And that enables you to do that in Ableton. That's the right amount of notes. What happened? That's kind of a really cool fuck up. Hang on, let me see. I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, like, look at it. It's, it's nothing on there. I put it, something to make it more mono, because it was so left and right, you know, every, every other note pans. It's more important to get the good sound in the synth, you know? And then you just record, like, pure shit. It's like a guitar guitarist mentality, kind of, you know? You get a really good sound on your amp. And something works, is cool, you know? interesting the four voices is like undeniable something it's crazy you know the next step like after sequencing of course you got to record it back in you know that start with it filter a little more I can throw this sound to the fucking Jupiter. It's really cool where it goes major. What's up with that synthax? The synthax? I mean, I think it could come in right on that major chord, I think. Synthax is just a cool ass Elka synth. Yeah. It's just like a prophet. It's just. It's just got some cool filters and phasers and shit. Yeah. Almost like a 
like a phaser, you know what I mean? Just needs more juice. Let's just double that EQ up a couple of times. The thing to do when you're working is just to go fast instead of digging for a solution, just figure something out and keep moving. I play the synths from there too. Nah, it's just some way to wait off a of Reddit. Trap producer kit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I used the Mike Dean drum kit too. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I downloaded all that shit. It's like, I used to have 808 contests, that was the best. <laughs> People would send me 808s, it was great. I guess I'll play something on you know, this stupid thing. Ornamental, but it detunes as it slides. That's the coolest thing about that synth. Like the OBX has got like a flaw in the ornamental where the eight voices they get off as it goes. Yeah, it's the craziest shit I've ever heard. Quickie clean up, you know, like. I don't get lost in my new shit. I just like jump through shit real quick. See, everything I do is literally improv. You know what I mean? I don't really think about much at all. Play like some Aussie shit. And, I mean, I'm classically pretty. I mean, I studied Bach and Beethoven since I was like eight years old. You know, well, these are like major ninth chords and shit. This is like kind of jazz, yacht, rocky chords. <laughs> You know, that's why I like parts that I play turn into like hooks, you know, hooky things, you know. I'm going for the same sound all the time. <laughs> it's weird, like, you know what I mean? The same kind of aggression, I guess, is, you know what I mean? It's gonna be something cool. Make the music sound better, right? Let me get a guitar. So good. Here and this and that together, look.
that was fire. I love mistakes or whatever accidents. That was cool as shit. Let's go. Came out good. You never know when you're gonna film something that was gonna be good or not. Yeah. <laughs>